Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. Now before we get started, I do just want to hope you all had a beautiful time off and you got to spend some time with the people that you love, eat some great food, maybe have a few bevies and relax. So yes, I hope you all had a lovely time. I know I did, I got to see my little sister for a few days. We just sat around, ate lots of chocolates, watched a few Christmas films as well and just chilled out and spent some time with each other and the rest of the family. So yes, it was a lovely little break and much needed, but I'll tell you what, I'm really looking forward to 2024 now. So Saturday morning and it was absolutely tipping it down when I first woke up. I didn't think I was going to be able to get down here but it does seem to be drying out ever so slightly but I don't think we've got any sunshine today. As you can see, you might be able to see it, it's still drizzling right now. So we're going to see if we can get a few little jobs done down here. We've still got loads of pruning to do. The two apple trees, they've lost all of their leaves now so we're going to get in there and give them a good old cut back and then we've got the three or four fruit bushes that I've got near the seating area. They really weren't in their dormant stage over the last few weeks but all the leaves have now gone so we're going to get in there and also give them a prune and then fingers crossed that should be all of the fruit bushes because we have got quite a few down here on the plot and then we've also got the two compost heaps now if you remember we did give one of them a real good turn last weekend and we managed three or four barrow loads of beautiful compost so I do want to get in there today and see if we can empty that bed because then we can start transferring some of the woodier material from the bed next to it into that bed and we can start that afresh so yes I do want to try and get the compost heaps done and then finally we have got some wood chip to do so on the other side the grass path side there is just two or three paths we're probably talking five to six seven maybe barrow loads of the wood chip so if we do have some time towards the end of the day and if we don't get rained off that is another job I'd like to try and get done as you know there's always some bits and pieces along the way I think a few of my garlics have started to sprout so I'll show you what's going on there and anything else that I find along I'm sure the robin will also pop around to say hello he's up in the tree at the moment singing his little song so what I'll do as always I'm going to have a little cup of coffee warm myself up and then we'll start with the pruning of the fruit tree and the fruit bushes so come on guys So this is one of my apple trees and as you can see it was cut down to a stump so the plot holder before me kept cutting this back for some reason and I'm not too sure but as soon as I took on this plot I've just let this tree keep growing and over the past four years it's grown to this really healthy specimen. Now I'm not too sure on what apple variety it is but they are rather large apples and they're a little bit sour so I do believe they're some form of cooking apple and we did get quite a few off it last year and the year before I think we just got one or two but we do have the problem with the coddling moth so that is something that I do need to sort out for 2024. Now this tree seems pretty healthy so we haven't really got any dead disease or damage wood to take off but we do have quite a bit of overcrowding and some of these branches are starting to rub so we do need to deal with those bits. Now you don't want any rubbing branches as this could lead to a wound on the tree and that will allow some disease or some rot to get into it which is something you don't want and the thing with the branches being too overcrowded is that you want plenty of space in between those branches especially when it's in full leaf and it's got those apples in there just to reduce any chance of any mould or disease that might be airborne. So we're just going to start by removing some of these shoots that are grown from the trunk of the tree and then we can start by removing some of these rubbing branches and also some that we need to remove to allow that airflow to get through this tree. So let's get in here and finish off by just reducing some of the height as well. As with all pruning you want to be cutting just above a shoot but you don't want this to be any shoot you want it to be pointing away from the tree to ensure that all that new growth grows away from the tree and will help you maintain that goblet shape but also allow plenty of air around that tree. You don't really want to be taking more than 10 to 20 percent off maybe 25 if it's a really old mature tree that you've got. Thank you. 
this here is my second apple tree so I did plant this one but it's only been in the ground for a couple of years now we have managed to get some apples off it but if you do have a tree that you've only planted in the last three years I wouldn't say to prune it too hard other than the odd sort of trimmings here and there like we've got this little branch here that's growing a little bit differently to the rest of it so we'll give that a little bit of a chop and do just keep an eye out for any dead or diseased dying wood but to be fair I would say that first two three years of the plant being out I wouldn't worry too much about pruning it oh <laughs> it's getting exciting now so we've got the first little spring bulbs that are now starting to peek up through the soil so we've got these three in here and then I think we've also got a tulip as well do you see him down there? He's the only one in this bed which seems to be showing its head. Now you can see I have put those grates over them just to protect them from any squirrels or rats. But yes, spring is on the way guys. So it might not look like it, but in here we have got three currant bushes. We've got a red currant, a white currant, and a pink currant. So I want to get in here and give it a real good prune. Now I've done plenty of videos over the last few weeks about how to prune your fruit bushes and your trees. So I'm not going to go into detail here. I'm just going to get in there and give it a good old hack. Now these are good three, maybe four years old, so I can give them a real good trim. So come on, let's get in there. There we go, looking a lot neater and tidier now. That's gonna have a lot more airflow come spring and summertime when this will be full of leaf and full of berries too. It doesn't really seem to be picking up the vivid pink and the vivid green that we've got down here, but this is the rhubarb. We're not gonna have any to harvest until April time, but I just love the first signs of life for 2024. Right, so let's get back into the compost heap. So we were only in here last weekend, I believe, and we managed to fill three beds with some really beautiful compost. So I wanna get in here and try and get as much of that compost from the bottom as possible. Now we've got quite a lot of this woody material on top, so I'm just gonna transfer that over into the bin on the right-hand side, fill that up and see if we can get to the bottom of this pile. Now I've got a couple of beds that need a mulch of this stuff. We did put some green manure in them, but they didn't do too well. So I'm just going to give it a mulch full of this compost. And then we've also got the rhubarb. And that's quite a big bed. So that will probably take a couple of wheelbarrow loads as well. So let's get in here and see how much of this compost we can find. So we've managed a couple of the smaller beds and this big old rhubarb bed as well and doesn't it look beautiful there's something about a freshly mulched bed but yeah come april time hopefully from all of this beautiful mulch and all the nutrients that we're adding to the plant we should get some really healthy stems come april time 
And as you can see in the compost heap on the left hand side, we're getting to the bottom of it. We've still got a few more barrow loads to go, so I'll probably do that in the new year. And then once we've emptied the bed on the left, we can start transferring some of that woody stuff back into the one on the left hand side from the right and put that right at the bottom. And then we can start adding to that pile again. And then hopefully in the next couple of months, we can start using the compost heap, which is on the right hand side. really worried about this bed because we've got hell of a lot of garlic in here so the two rows that we can see really well were planted September and October whereas everything else was planted in November and it hasn't really been showing itself other than the one or two but look all their bright green tassels are now showing above the soil level and we should have a few more to come as well so fingers crossed we should get a really good garlic harvest this year. This isn't the only bed, I have got a couple of other beds for garlic as well and they're doing just as great. So yes, cannot wait for 2024 garlic season. So these are the last two standing sunflowers of 2023. So I do want to get these down before we enter 2024 because they are a little bit miserable and sad looking at the moment. But what I do like to do with any cuttings is I do like to stick them down in the corner of my wildlife area. So down here, I've got loads of old broken bamboo canes that I don't use anymore. A lot of the sunflower stems I stick down here, but just any cuttings just to give those critters somewhere nice and safe to stay over the winter time and into spring. So that is all we've got time for today folks and I can't believe that this is going to be the last video of 2023 just where has the time gone so I think I started making these videos back on the 30th of April this year and since then I've managed to get over 900 subscribers so I did just want to take this time to say thank you to all of you because I do really appreciate all the support from the views the comments the subs it all really matters and without you guys this channel wouldn't be here. So I did just want to say thank you for all your support over the last sort of eight months. It's been great and I can't wait to start 2024 with you and to film a whole year down here on the plot. So I hope everybody is ready for the New Year celebrations. Me, myself, I think it's going to be a night in with a bath and a book and a chilled one because I would like to try and get down here on New Year's Day. But I'm not too sure what the weather's going to be like because it does look like we've got quite a bit of rain over the next couple of days. Wherever you are in the world, I wish you a very happy new year and a great start to 2024. I've got a couple of resolutions. I want to get a little bit more healthier so that I can start going back out doing some wild camping and bring you guys along with me. And I also want to try and put a little bit more time into this channel so that it really starts to take off. So there are a couple of things that I do want to focus on for 2024. Like I say, I'm not going to be down here tomorrow, but fingers crossed, weather permitting, I will be down here on the Monday. But if not, guys, I will see you next week for another adventure down on the plot don't forget to subscribe like comment all of that good stuff and i'll see you all very soon so take care guys see you later bye bye